The UK electricity system currently emits around 12,000 tonnes of CO2 each hour. And this will need to be radically reduced for the country to meet its ambitious national carbon targets. Achieving these aims will require rapid and substantial changes, but there are tentative signs that the power sector has turned a corner and the required reductions are beginning to materialise. There are several complementary forces at work, which are combined to give a 46% reduction in carbon emissions in the space of just a few years. Firstly, demand is steadily declining by 1-2% to a year. Secondly, coal is being displaced by gas and import electricity, so its share has fallen by three quarters since 2012. And thirdly, the share of other renewables is currently rapidly growing, with wind, solar and biomass now providing one-fifth of demand. These changes are not as simple as the headline view may have us believe. For example, demand has been depressed in recent years due to a succession of mild winters, and this cannot be expected to continue indefinitely. The share of coal and gas consumption is influenced by international events. 2012 saw a fall in gas usage as the Fukushima disaster increased Japan's need to import gas. The Arab Spring reduced supplies to the Middle East, and American coal provided a cheap alternative as shale gas forced down US power prices. Furthermore, the mechanism by which the carbon of import electricity is accounted for has had an impact. An increasing share of electricity is being imported through the interconnectors from France and the Netherlands, and this electricity is treated as being zero carbon when calculating national emission inventories. This conveniently negates the fact that Britain now exports around 3% of its power sector emissions abroad. This accounting convention implies that importing all of Britain's electricity is a valid route to decarbonisation, even though French and Dutch fossil fuel power stations release CO2 into the same atmosphere as British ones. With an increasing share of generation becoming inflexible, semi-controllable and unpredictable, the system must cope with a widening range of conditions that will push both operational constraints and economic frictions onto the market. It's clear that Britain's electricity system is approaching several critical tipping points. Firstly, weather dependent renewables supply more than 50% of instantaneous demand. Secondly, wholesale prices fall negative in both summer due to solar and winter due to wind, and finally solar output forcing a minimum net demand below the level of must-run output. Peak demand has not yet compromised system reliability, despite installed thermal capacity falling by 20 gigawatts. However, minimum demand is instead rapidly becoming an issue as it approaches the point where intermittent renewables and inflexible nuclear collide. These changes stem from a confluence of many factors, some that can be steered by policy and some that are simply beyond our control. Many of the changes have been influenced by policy set at European level, the 2020 targets for renewable energy, the LCPD and of course the EUA trading scheme. With the UK's decision to leave Europe, it's unclear whether these policies will be retained in the long term. Retracting any of them is likely to see an increase in Britain's carbon emissions. However, we may not automatically see a reversal in fortunes, since, as with the carbon price law, Britain has shown the will to go further than European incentives to decarbonise.